Hi, this is Jane from Talis TCT. In this video, I'll be integrating HPE's ESLG3 tape library and Talis TCT's Key Secure for Government KMIP compliant key manager. To keep this video as brief as possible, I've done pre-configuration that I'll just briefly go over. Here on Key Secure, on the Security tab, Local CAs, I've created a local CA called Integration CA. It is a self-signed certificate authority that will act as a root of trust for the integration. I then added the Integration CA to the default trusted CA list profile. This list will be assigned to the KMIP key server telling it what certificate authorities are to be trusted. All certificate authorities in a chain should be added to this default trusted CA list if you do have a certificate chain. I also created a TLS server certificate called KMIP Server Cert 1. I created the request. I had it signed by the local CA. I installed it back. And this is the server certificate that will be bound to the KMIP key server. Coming here to the device tab, I created the KMIP key server. You can see it's listening on port 5696 and it has the TLS server cert bound to it. And if I click on the Properties tab and go to the Authentication Settings section, you can see I have it set for Client Certificate Authentication and Username Authentication. So we will not only be validating that the client certificate is signed by a valid certificate authority, but we will also be extracting from the certificate a username and we will verify that a local user on Key Secure exists with that username. And when the tape library connects to Key Secure and asks to generate a key, any keys that it generates will be owned by that user. So it's not only a way of authenticating the client, but it's also a way of providing key ownership. So here you can see you can select from different fields in the certificate where you're going to be pulling the username from. In this case, we'll be using the common name field. And the trusted CA list profile is set to default. And that is the local CA that I created is the trusted root for this integration. So the last thing that I did is on the security tab, local authentication, I created a user called ESLG3 and you do have to enter a password, but in this integration it is not used. But you do have to enter it when you create this user. So this must be the common name field in the certificate that we create. So that's the configuration of Key Secure, and we'll now go to the tape library. Here in the library management console, I am logged in with security privileges. You must have security privileges to be able to access the KMIP Key Manager configuration. So click on Setup, and here under Encryption, KMIP Key Manager, and the first step is to import the certificates. You can see here it's asking for two certificates. It wants the root certificate and the client certificate. So for the root certificate, we need to download the local CA certificate. So I'm going to come here to the Security tab, Local CAs. With that CA selected, click Download. You'll want to save it. So it's been saved to the download folder here. And now I'm going to browse, go to the download folder, and I'm going to change the file type to all files. And the extension of a downloaded local CA certificate is .cer. So this is the root certificate. Click open and you can see it has loaded that certificate. Client certificate is going to be a PKCS12 certificate. That has to be generated externally using a tool like OpenSSL. With OpenSSL you would create the private key, you'd create the certificate signing request, you'd have that request signed by the integration CA here, and then you would download the signed certificate, and then again using SSL, you would use a command to generate a PKCS12 file which will combine the private key and the certificate and password protect it. 
So here you can see it's asking for the file and the password. Now I've already done this offline. I'm not going to cover the creation of that file in this video. So I'm just going to browse to it and it is on the desktop. And you can see it's called eslg3.p12 and select it and open. And now it's going to want the password that I used to protect the file. And again, this is done with OpenSSL. And with that, click OK. So it successfully uploaded the certificates and um, it did some validation, made sure the certificates are OK. So the next step now is to come to Setup, Encryption, KMIP Key Manager, Configure Servers. Now I was unable to clear the configured key servers, so I'm just going to leave them as it is, but you would enter the IP address of the key server and the second key server. ESLG3 does require that you have two key servers. It will not let you complete the setup unless you fill in at least two. So just be aware that that is a requirement going in, into the integration that you have to have two key secures that are clustered together. Okay, and here you can see a test option. So when I click test, it is actually going to go out and attempt to establish a TLS session with Key Secure, and it is also going to be sending a KMIP query up, so that will also authenticate the user and make sure that the user is authenticated properly and everything would be ready to go for subsequent key generation. So I'm going to click test. And you can see everything passed. And if I come up here to Key Secure, Device, Log Viewer, Activity Log, you can see queries that came up from ESL G3. So with that, the integration is complete. I'm going to click OK. And it's saying no changes found because those were the previously configured key servers, which is fine. With the tape library and Key Secure now communicating, the final step, and I'll cancel here, would be to configure which partitions should be using Key Secure. So you come to Key Manager, Configure Partitions, and at this point I will yield to HBE documentation on how this all works, but you can see here that what you're going to want to do is select the partition and click Library Managed and that will instruct that partition to use the external key manager key secure. So if I click OK, it will take the partition offline and when brought back online and used, that partition will now be using key secure for its key storage. So please consult HP documentation on how that all works, but that just gives you an idea. So I hope this video has helped. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact Talus TCT or HPE Customer Support. Thanks for watching.